everyone and welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we are uh, talking about the third film and what for a long time was thought to be the final film in the... Uh, should be. <laughs> it still should be in the Indiana Jones franchise. That's Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade. Yeah. Uh, and I'm assuming that the crew is more or less the same. The same. <laughs> yeah, so this movie was released in May of 1989, for, you know, directed by Steven Spielberg, obviously. Uh, this time written by Jeffrey Bohm, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, starring Harrison Ford, a uh, man by the name of Denholm Elliott, Allison Dooley as uh, his female counterpart in this film, and Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Yeah, so it just... made for a budget of around $49 million. I think it made like 475 at the box office, so... Just know, a little profit. Just a little bit of profit. Just a little bit of Didn't profit. do too bad. <laughs> yeah, so just like the other ones... Um, I don't think I've ever sat through this film from beginning to end. I mean, obviously, I've seen the scene uh, that I think everybody has seen where he, you know, did the, the the cup. The Holy Grail. The Holy Grail, and, you know, he chose poorly or whatever. Um, and there was a couple other scenes that I know that I recognize watching this, but I think this is the first time that I've sat through and watched this movie from beginning to end. So, um, again, a fairly new experience for me. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming you've seen this. Again, lots of times. <laughs> uh, I think this is the one I've probably seen the most amount of times. Oh, uh, really? Personally, I think, in my in my opinion, and getting into our thoughts, um, I don't think it's necessarily the best all around film in, in the franchise. But to me, it's probably the most rewatchable. Mm. So, well, it's the longest, take it as, as you will. Not by much. I mean, it's like five <laughs> minutes longer than the last one. Okay, yeah, it's the <clears> longest. Which you know, this one had something coming in that made me kind of excited for that the other ones didn't have and that is Sean Connery. Sean Connery. I love me some Sean Connery. Um I mean obviously I knew he was in this movie. Um he doesn't show up till about like fifty minutes in. Yeah. Uh but once he shows up he's a he's a major role in it. Um I was excited to see it. Yeah, it is the longest, but uh, I don't ever really. To me, I don't ever really feel the runtime. I, I I still think it's a it's a pretty well paced action adventure romp. Yeah. That you can have fun with pretty much from yeah. the beginning to end. I think it's well paced. I think it's better paced than the last one. Yeah. I still think I still think they could probably shave twenty twenty five minutes off of this. I think there's a few scenes that go on too long. I think the the thing in the tank just seemed to really go on forever. Mm -hmm. Um, and there was a couple other scenes I thought that could have probably went or been trimmed down. Um, but no, I think I did enjoy this one more than I enjoyed the last one. I didn't feel the runtime nearly as bad. Um, a lot of that has to do because I love Harrison Ford and Sean Connery. He's yeah, they're dynamic and together in, in this and movie. It's, it's really good. Um, you know, I still have the same basic complaints that I have with the other ones. I think the villains are weak and not that memorable. I mean, you know the instant that one guy says, don't trust anyone, where you're like, okay, well, he's obviously the bad guy. There's no surprise <laughs> twist there or anything. Um... <laughs> So, I mean, but, you know, that's a gripe I had with the other two as well. And the female lead, um, as with the other two, is not really that compelling. Either. No, she's, she's just here and, to be here. I mean, she's prettier than the other two, I guess. <laughs> well, I mean, marginally maybe, but uh, she's she's more nebulous this time as to whether <clears throat> she's a good guy or a bad guy, I guess. Yeah. She kind of flips, flops back and forth throughout the movie. And then I like I did like her character the thing with the, at the end that she was so obsessed with the grail that yeah. she couldn't save herself over it or whatever. But, um, uh, I mean, but other than that, you know, there's still, you know, there's, there's some moments that it gets really slapsticky and that I didn't think really. Yeah, you talked about that scene with the, with the plane, with the going plane, through, especially, um, going through the tunnel and it, it passes them. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> that was a little out of left field, but whatever. But, um, I thought overall the tone was pretty spot on for this movie yeah. aside from a couple of moments. Um, I think they knew what they what they were wanting to make and the kind of film that they were wanting to make and they stuck to it. It doesn't take itself too seriously. It has it has a lot of fun and it yeah. knows that it's trying to do that. So Yeah, there's a couple other plot holes and contrivances. I think Indiana makes a couple of big leaps of logic in this movie <laughs> a couple of times and um you know, just the usual kind of Indiana Jones plot contrivances of why didn't they kill him when they had the chance, <laughs> or you know, uh, multiple times or whatever. And you know, Indiana Jones has been able to beat up on a bunch of Nazis just because, <laughs> but just whatever. Cause. <clears throat> um, but no, I, I, I overall I really enjoy this movie. I think there's a lot of fun uh, a lot set of pieces, fun. Uh, action sequences. Uh, you could tell that they spent their money wisely. I think that, on this I movie. think they they did better with the special effects this time around. I yeah, mean, there's some there's some rough matting shots here or there because yeah. you know obviously they did some of that. 
but for the most part, I think I think it holds up, like the matting and, and everything and the special effects, green screen work and stuff like that. It all holds up way better than Temple do. Yeah, it, it definitely. I think. I mean, there, like you said, there's a few rough shots, but um, what do you think about the effect of the guy when he drank the the wrong out of the wrong? I've color? always liked it. I mean, it's it's goofy and it's cheesy, yeah. but I like it. So. Yeah, same thing. I think with the melting effect in the yeah. in the first film. Um, it, 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 it is a little odd now. But I, I assume it's stop endearing. motion, I guess. Yeah, there's a lot of stop motion and stuff involved, in that, but I, I like it still. Yeah. Um, but no, I uh, I enjoyed this one quite a bit. I, I think mean, it's a fun time. It's, uh, again, just like the other Indiana Jones films, these aren't really my kind of movies, That's I would fair. say. Um, but as far as action, adventure, treasure hunt type movies go, I mean, it's probably about as good as it gets. So. Yeah. Um, but anyway, you want to get in some final thoughts? I guess go ahead and get in some final thoughts. Uh, well, I guess uh, if you don't mind, I'll start. Okay, go for it. <laughs> um, this one, like I said, I have always enjoyed this movie, so it's it's up there for me. Uh, I, I definitely think it's the most rewatchable out of the original trilogy. Not the best made per se. Mm-hmm. I definitely say that first one's the best made, and I still really really enjoy that first one. But to me, something about this movie and how much fun you have with it. And the dynamic between Harrison Ford and Sean Connery, it's just its just a fun time to watch to me. So um, I've always enjoyed it. Special effects this time around are a lot better than the last time around, in, in my opinion. Um, and I, I, I really enjoy it. I think it's a really fun time. Some some decent character development this time around and everything like that. But uh, overall, I'm going to say it's definitely a buy it for this one. Definitely a buy it. Yeah, I, yeah, I'll agree with most of what you said. I think if I were to go back and rewatch these, I think this would probably be first on my list. I think largely because of Sean Connery and just the uh, affection I have for Sean Connery, I guess, um, he makes it more watchable to me than I thought the other two were. Um, and, yeah, I think this one's better, especially it's a, a better than Temple of Doom, at, you know, uh, pacing and spreading out its action and yeah. being a little more varied in its action set pieces and, and such. Um, and, you know, I, I agree with you, too. I think some of the effects or largely the effects and everything are done better. Um, I still think, you know, I still kind of have the same problems I do with all the other Andrew Jones movies. I think they could be about 20, 25 minutes shorter. I think that applies to all three. I wish that there was a better villain to be more, you know, afraid of or involved with or whatever the case may be, which, again, is true of all three. Mm-hmm. Um this one, even though it's the longest, though, I will say I think the best compliment I can give it, it doesn't feel like the longest. Um, and uh, I still think it's a really fun adventure romp. I'm going to say buy it as well. I think it's uh, worth buying and watching. Yeah, it a it's a good times. time. So, um, but other than that, I guess uh, that leaves us with one Indiana Jones movie. Yeah. Yeah. Kingdom, it's not good. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Preview thoughts. It's not good. It's not that great. I know a lot of fans really. I, you know, I haven't seen it since it came out in theaters. I have. I'll be honest. I only. I've watched, seen it since then, but yeah, it's, you know. <laughs> yeah. So it'll be interesting to go back and revisit it. I know, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that the uh, the woman from the first film she comes back, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. Marianne's and I Marianne. do remember very fondly. Uh, <laughs> uh, Shia LaBeouf. Shia, I love Shia LaBeouf. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Shia LaBeouf has proven himself to be a talented actor. He's good in certain movies. He's not good in other movies. That's but true. anyway. But uh, mm-hmm. other than that, we do have like two pieces of news, I guess. Uh, Tenet has since been pushed back again to August the 12th. Mm-hmm. So another two weeks. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. And then Mulan has been pushed back to August 21st. So I guess that means we will not review the animated film probably in two weeks. That's right. We'll have to find uh, some other time to do it. Some other time to do it, and something to replace that, or just maybe move everything back a week. I don't know. Maybe we'll I'm not sure. I guess we'll, we'll have to figure it sit out. here and figure it out. But uh, yeah. What so, are your, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, do you think they're ever going to come out? Of my time? question is: is like, okay, so the cycle seems to be that okay, so well, the theaters aren't open yet, so let's wait till all the theaters are open and running before we start movies. But then the theaters are like, well, there's no movies coming out, so we can't open. So. At some point, somebody's going to have to be like... Someone's got to give, like, be, say when, and be like, okay, we're going to open here. Yeah. Make sure you have movies that are ready to come out on such and such a date. Yeah. Or maybe, like I said earlier, maybe not release your... Don't wait for the mega blockbusters. Yeah, maybe don't wait these for studios, your big titles. Yeah, if you got something like on these the These mid-tier burn, movies. Yeah. Like these, like these movies that they all got pushed back, they were kind of iffy anyway, like Antlers or... New um, Mutants or something new like that. You know, I know that, you know, like New Mutants is scheduled for August. Like, yeah. pull it back up. Be like, okay, if you guys are going to open on July 15th, we'll have a movie for you. We'll, we'll take New Mutants and mm-hmm. we'll put it on 
Mulan spot July 24th yeah. because it's probably not going to make any money that much money anyway. Let's at least give them something to watch. Yeah. Maybe because it's the one of the first movies coming out, it will make more money. Than Actually, it would do better August. than it would otherwise. Yeah, something so. like that. But That's, I mean, if I, I, I think, was, I think studios thing. and movie theaters need to figure out what they're going to do and, and I think, work something out because I mean, like AMC, Cinemark, all of them. Uh, Cinemark is opening up its locations. They've been opening up their locations for the last two weeks. AMC supposedly, I guess, will open up ninety percent of its theaters. They haven't on July said fifteenth, but they haven't they've had all day to say whether or not that they're gonna. Yeah. I mean, yesterday that news of those two major movies, the last two major movies in July, getting pushed back to August. I mean, they've had all day to talk and decide whether or not they wanna they wanna you know push their reopening yeah. date back, and they haven't yet. And so, I mean, I, my thought process being an employee of AMC, if they haven't said it yet, they're not gonna do it. They're just gonna still. Open I read July. I read a statement from the CEO like right before Tenant got pushed back that he said, um, if Mulan got pushed back, mm-hmm. they were gonna stick with it. But if Tenant got back, they'd have to reevaluate. Got pushed back, they'd have to reevaluate. Which Tenant did get pushed back, but so it didn't know. get pushed back as far as Mulan. So I don't. Yeah. Know. So I I don't know. I it's it's a hard you know, and I think a lot of it. Not, I think some of it has to do with the fact that you know we're having like a second wave right yeah, now with everything wave is, opening is hitting up. hard. But um, they're gonna. I mean, the theaters if they don't open up soon, they're just gonna go out of business. There's just no way around it. They yeah. were a lot of them were struggling anyway. They just can't. AMC is definitely struggling. Mm-hmm. I know that we we've been meeting with investors and stuff like that trying to get some way for them to help us get yeah. bailed out of all of our debt or whatever but yeah um but so something's gonna have to give somebody's gotta give eventually and you know i don't know i don't know what the problem with being with these studios just let the theaters play your big, bigger backlogs like you know we went to the th- driving in and now and watched jaws, and jaws and jurassic park yeah that's a great option cinemark's doing a thing called uh comeback classics they're yeah. playing a Older movies that have been out, you know, previously in theaters, I saw some places they're playing like the Dark Knight trilogy, yeah. uh, and you know, anticipation for Tenet and stuff like that. I saw one place is playing Mad Max Fury Road and some yeah. other stuff like that. Those are great movies to watch on the big screen. Get stuff that people you know has has consistently made money in, in your backlog, and be like, yeah. okay, uh, maybe there's a younger audience that you know movie that's been out for thirty years. Mm-hmm. A younger audience is you know in love with that movie now. Yeah, uh, something like an Indiana Jones or something like that. And yeah, you could be like. Well, we'll put that out in theaters. People will go watch it. It made money before. It should make money now. There's a following for it. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I, even if we open up in July, I think that we still have the potential to make money with some backlog episodes, especially in the market that we're in. We do really well with family movies and stuff like that. So if we can get some some studios that are like trying to push their, maybe their family movies or something yeah. out there. but yeah, Somebody's so, got to give. Somebody's got to do something at some point. So I'll be interested to see where it goes. Definitely. Um, hopefully, let's hope that AMC sticks to their July. Hopefully, because uh, I'm running out of unemployment. Right running out. Of, <laughs> but uh, other than that, um, I guess our next major franchise will be Halloween. Halloween, yeah, we'll start Halloween. In Assuming about that Halloween two doesn't weeks, get pushed I guess. back. <laughs> but, um, other than that, we do have another podcast. If Aaron wants to tell you about it, that's right. We do another podcast called Stomp This Way, where we review a different giant monster movie every week. For sure. So having a lot of fun over there. But other than that, uh, if you want to follow us on social media. Yeah, we're up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're still at DNA Film Wars on all those platforms. So make sure you give us a like or follow. And be sure to tell your friends about us. That's right. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Absolutely. And we will see you next time. Catch you later.